time the length of uh, cross-border payments is usually very long and that's disturbing and uh, uh, they can be based on uh, traditional systems like modification of SWIFT and implementation in all countries. The second model is when the central bank becomes kind of a super correspondent bank based on the like and they become the center for all other banks or the use of digital currencies themselves as a tool for inter-country settlements in three different ways. Uh, the first one is the country, the second one is when the currency can be used in different countries and the third is creating a universal currency available for all countries. Now they are experimenting with these models and which of the three courses will be the first to come to the finish we will see just a bit later but the competition is already running the topic of my presentation today is a popular trend which is to do with the issuing or implementation of digital uh, currencies of central banks. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, recently, a survey was published about which countries and which central banks have plans to issue their cur digital currencies. Yesterday, um, I saw the news that the Bank of China has published the details of its plan of issuing their own digital currency. So there are many interesting aspects to this issue. And the most interesting one is that 10% of the people participating in the survey, um, where over 70 countries took part, um, said that they were going to issue their own digital currency. And let's start with today. What is wrong with the existing financial system? A lot has been said about it. I'm not going into detail now. But I'll tell you about some important um, things. And a populist slide is the purchasing power of the dollar in the 100 years that the Federal Reserve System has existed. Only 3% of its value remains now. It's on the one hand that's uh, uh, low. And uh, if you think about the depreciation the dollar has had each um, year, then uh, from this point of view, dollar is really stable currency in spite of its um, uh, <coughs> of this trend. All other currencies have lost a lot more value than the dollar. Starting with the 1970s, when the stage of the world uh, economy was finished, uh, which was based on the gold standard, uh, which used to be the limit of the rights and um, of central banks on money em emission. But um, as the central banks were limited, in their mission. The accumulation of debt was usually very painful. Uh, for example, the, uh, um, getting rid of the gold standard in the US was the major reason for the war in Vietnam, uh, which led to huge debt accumulation. Uh, starting with the 1970s, the disparity uh, between the real economy uh, which is measured in uh, GDP, although there are a lot of issues with the calculation of GDP, but it was created in the 1930s to measure the real market of commodities and service services. Uh, the GDP calculation was never meant to calculate the digital economy. In the 1960s, the GDP in the US uh, includes uh, the internet transactions of the banks. In 2013, for example, uh, the 
they changed the methodology of calculating the GDP, and added, thus they added about one trillion dollars to the GDP of the U.S. Um, so, uh, the figures to do with GDP should be treated uh, very uh, cautiously in today's conditions. The financial assets, uh, on the example of the U.S., this is an aggregated index. The red line is a leverage of the financial system in a broad sense both financial and non-financial. You see that these uh, two lines are going apart very quickly. To speak in a bank language, uh, the leverage of the American economy and the world economy is growing. Nevertheless, in this situation, the uh, real assets behave uh, in a stable way. I am not giving you any figures although uh, this can be proven in statistical and quantitative uh, way, the behavior of gold and uh, oil as uh, the most typical material commodities shows that they live um, simultaneously. There are a few uh, examples, anecdotes, um, that show the stability. One of them is to do with the cost of grain um, in the on the table the sumer uh, tables uh, that were found um, that date back uh, 3000 um, years before christ the price of corn is in gold and a researcher calculated the price of this corn uh, now, and it shows that the difference in price is smaller than 15%. I decided to do this experiment on myself and calculated um, the, the, the tic metro ticket in Moscow in gold. And uh, it shows that uh, one ounce of gold would buy you 1,300 um, uh, journeys by metro. So, with all the devaluation and inflation, the elements of the real world are connected with uh, each other in a rigid way, and the world is not falling apart uh, in this sense. Nevertheless, the cash, as one of the main elements of our life, behaves in a um, strange manner and counter in a counterintuitive way. And um, digitalization can lead us to the conclusion that um, they become less popular, cash becomes less popular, but actually it is wrong. This is one of the slides, the reports on the use of cash and digital payments um, uh, published by banks. And this uh, slide is two years old. It shows that apart from five or six countries, including Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, if I am not mistaken, all other countries, the share of cash is growing, not falling. And although the volume of digital payments is also growing, and the countries that use the most digital payments, Switzerland, for example, or Japan, in general, the Eurozone and Russia, Russia is a separate story. Uh, we are not going to look into the political sphere, but uh, Switzerland, for example, and Europe, the cash has been used more recently, and uh, it's, uh, it is connected with the policy of uh, negative interest rates. In Switzerland, there appeared hedge funds that offered companies a um, money-saving um, way. They took um, money and um, uh, converted them into cash or 50 euro uh, banknotes and put them in their saves. You can talk along at length about interest rates, and I'm not going to continue now, but everything that is taking place in the world of money is dictated now by this phenomenon. What is 
What is happening to the existing money system? Uh, firstly, the money is uh, experiencing a phenomenon which many people are not happy with or even concerned about is the non-stop quantitative easing. And uh, the central banks say that we are going to, to print some more money, but then take it out. Nothing comes out of this. The experience, uh, the first experience in um, negative interest rates was in, in Switzerland in the 1970s, but um, more serious uh, trial was in 2003 in Japan where they started to do in, uh, negative interest rates and then they tried to return to the positive parts of the axis but they couldn't do it and uh, they came back to the negative interest rates and added a lot of easing to that. Europe uh, even didn't uh, try to experiment with that. It went into quantitative easing straight away and uh, Americans too. Um, in Americans tried to raise the interest rates uh, due to Trump partially and to uh, problems in the economy, but they stopped this process and in November last year FRS started the uh, quantitative easing and adding money uh, to the economy again. So quantitative easing, negative interest rates and cash safe heavens is the, are the things that are on the surface now and they show how the money system is developing in all developed countries now. As for the banking system, the story with too big to fail, uh, especially in 2008, um, showed that um, banks were bailed out by all uh, largest banks. I'm not going to retell you the story of uh, the post-crisis, but one characteristic of this crisis is um, the, what is written in the first block of Bitcoin, that the British Treasury has started to bail out the banking system. The, it is not by chance that the person who wrote it, we even don't know the name of this person, wrote this so that uh, to mark the main reason uh, for launching the Bitcoin. The aggregating problems of the banking system and the trust to this system lead to constant increase in the volume of insurance the limit of insurance, and not only in Russia, but also in other countries. And uh, actually, the uh, deposit insurance system is a drug that is supporting this connection between the population as um, lenders and the banks as the bodies that take the money. And there are a lot of materials, and there is a symposium uh, on the deposit insurance, insurance, uh, all those materials say that it is a very ambigu ambiguous thing, but still all countries do that more and more each year. The system of correspondent banking as cross-border money uh, transit is also in the pro has problems. After the 2000 uh, and 2008 crisis, uh, the rules, um, regulations for corresponding bank and banking on in the undeveloped world are getting more rigid, rigid with each year. Even the UN had a special session um, on the corresponding banking uh, relations with uh, countries of Asia and Africa. And so this is uh, now considered as a global problem. And those phenomena that we know uh, very well is the emergence of cryptocurrency. And I don't know uh, if you know about the narrow bank case. I will talk a little bit about that. About uh, three years ago, a bank appeared uh, in the US uh, which was called the narrow bank and their own business was taking deposits 
um, that um, exceeded the insurance sum and uh, deploying those deposits in the Federal Reserve Bank. As the interest rate on those deposits did not exceed um, one-fourth of a percent, uh, you can calculate it easily. And um, so the uh, Federal Reserve registered this bank, but they've been uh, suing um, for a year and a half already because no, they don't want to open an account for this bank. So uh, what is uh, happening with in, in terms of the new system, monetary system? There are two ways, the classical uh, variant, um, um, is to add a third element to the cash and bank reserves as the digital currency of the central bank. I will talk about uh, more about it later. Uh, we need to understand that we are talking about adding a third element uh, to the so-called money base. Um, although there are options where this element um, uh, gets into the banking system money, but uh, still, the mainstream is using this money as the monetary base. And those who are fans of uh, cryptocurrencies, in, it is, this is my interpretation, by the way, as they see the monetary system in the context of Bitcoin and other highest uh, achievements of cryptography. As the base money, we should have uh, the independent uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and as uh, consumer money we should have tokens uh, doesn't matter now what tokens and uh, what what their characteristics are I showed you this slide so that you can uh, compare the general idea are similar but um, the actors in two in these two systems are different what is considered as the ideal currency. Historically, I'm not going to give you the definition of money. Um, I'll just uh, talk about two aspects. Historically, we always wanted to get uh, um, a good combination of the best aspects. Here is the same thing. On the one hand, we want uh, the money to store the value. And uh, this is why gold was always used as the ideal uh, store of value. Uh, uh, but there are complications with gold. It's difficult to carry it and so on. On the other hand, you have to make payments, and lots of them, and very fast. And so the debt money in different ways, like IOUs and um, uh, which appeared uh, in the times of uh, crusades. They are competitors, and uh, these two things, uh, we, uh, the technologists try to combine these two things, and so the appearance of cryptocurrencies and uh, opportunity to issue uh, digital currencies of central banks seems to be uh, to combine these two main aspects. This is something I'm not going to comment on. I think you know this picture. I just put it in so that you see it. This is one of the first taxonomies of digital currencies. A nice methodology. And the only thing I want to say about it is that it shows the characteristics of uh, peer-to-peer -peer operations and the emission uh, of this um, money either by central banks or non-central banks and whether this money is digital or not digital and whether it is universal or not universal. So this methodology uh, is developing and uh, gets adapted, but the basic thing is looks like this. Um, the, uh, last development in the context of uh, digital uh, currencies of central banks is dividing them into four purposes. So there are four categories that are the most popular. 
and the most widespread. They are retail currencies, wholesale or bank currency, bank reserves, the so-called cross-border currencies for international settlements and hybrid currencies. I'm going to talk about each one in more detail. In terms of technology, the two basic options, account-based and token-based, and al also there are two level currencies in terms of technologies. So uh, the taxonomy we have seen before kind of uh, is similar to what you can see in this slide. Depending on how you answer each question, you get this or that model. So the first one is who can get access, who can operate this currency, where and how this currency is stored, what is the degree of confidentiality. For example, in the Chinese system, anonymity is partial and uh, uh, it is expected that currency will be connected, so the token itself will be connected to a certain smart contract that can establish limitations both for the purpose of uh, its application and the quantity. Uh, the number of times this uh, token can be used. So. Uh, uh, it becomes a kind of a managed rocket a missile that knows where it's going to fly, how long it's going to fly after it leaves its owner and so on. Uh, then uh, presence of interest rates for such currencies is also under discussion and we should say that uh, when it comes to conversion parameters uh, and uh, uh, paying off the debt, this currency can gradually be am uh, amortized, depreciated. So you can get 100 uh, units and then at the end of the year one of them will be depreciated and you will get 99. So it's uh, kind of similar to the negative interest rates, uh, but uh, it will not be as direct as it happens today in the central bank. So uh, the negative rates will stay, but they will be realized through other algorithms. There are serial limitations or advantages for such currencies depending on the settlement time and uh, also, when it comes to bank currencies, uh, bank reserves, that's whether your settlement are final settlement are immediate or periodic. Uh, possibilities of programming. So these are not just bank notes, but are smart contracts that may create a lot of uh, features and. Uh, provide a lot of variation for uh, for this currency. And another key question is opportunity of crediting in this currency and if it's possible then who is going to do that? It is interesting that blockchain is present in these projects but it is not dominating. So the experiments that we have so, uh, do not include uh, uh, blockchain by definition. There are three uh, options of private blockchains uh, uh, under tests. So they started with Ethereum platform, but now uh, experiments with centralized model are rather popular. So. Now I'm going to talk about each type of currencies, so retail currency. Here you can see a short list 
now it's actually longer. China should be included. E-Krona is the pioneer of uh, retail currencies. Uh, because in Sweden there, are, there is a sharp decline in the volume of uh, cash and uh, to, to maintain the inclusiveness in Sweden, the Central Bank of Sweden is implementing e-Krona project. Now they have prepared a project of the law and they are at the stage of testing a practical model. And if I'm not mistaken, there are about 40 suppliers of services and software. So if you go to the bank of Swe uh, to the website of uh, the Bank of Sweden, you can see that they attract more and more contractors for e -chronum. The opposite example in Ecuador was Dinero Electronico when they attempted to skip from feudalism to socialism, so they didn't develop the system of cash uh, turnover, and they tried to switch immediately to electronic money, but uh, this attempt didn't have any positive result because they used just one telecom provider, and uh, it wasn't good enough to cover the entire territory of Ecuador and provide access in remote areas. The main features of uh, universal uh, currency is that it's uh, uh, accessible 24-7. Here you can see another interesting feature. To get this type of crypto cash, you have to open a direct account in the central bank. So it's not issued in the commercial bank account, but at the central bank. For example, in Switzerland, one and a half years ago, there was a referendum uh, on the Wallgeld project about transition to direct accounts of the citizens in the central bank. It failed, so uh, the people didn't vote. But about 30% of the population supported the changes. And this idea is uh, used as an assumption in many projects. This idea also solves the problem uh, of fast payments. Uh, because, for example, in the US, fast payments for the population are still terra incognita. So you have to pay through banks, which is slow and inconvenient. So talking about the technology, uh, the University College of London model is used. Uh, RS Coin, uh, uh, and it is used for many other projects too. In terms of uh, blockchain, it is expected that the central bank will issue money and the banks will be the nodes in the system. Hybrid currency is a different idea how to solve the problem of uh, uh, retail payments where special providers of payment services will have access to accounts in the central bank. This is similar to Kiwi and other payment systems in Russia that have direct access to an account in the central bank but uh, the central bank is not respons responsible for their coins and tokens. This model is attractive because it's easy, it's cheaper compared to the retail currency, and it's less painful for the banking system and is more predictable. So in this picture, you can see the comparison of the two systems. But I have already spoken about that. The digital currency for banks, for wholesale, 
is an idea that is developed by the central banks that didn't develop their payment system before, like Canada, Singapore, Malaysia. So there is a number of countries who failed to create their own target and um, they thought that instead of catching up with everyone else, they will try to create an experimental model based on blockchain and uh, different forms of crypto money. The main targets and objectives are shown here. The main thing is that these systems have uh, uh, the systems exist in addition to the traditional payment systems. Uh, also, they have a certain degree of finality, settlement, like by minute or by hour or by day. So information is not transmitted instantly. There are opportunities for liquidity management. And if you If you know something about contemporary payment systems, you can understand that they are complicated and their systems, uh, their problems are resolved based on uh, blockchain. I will mention two projects here. That's Jasper that started with Ethereum and uh, at the next stage uh, it was based on Corda and Uben. It's a project from Singapore, Jasper is from Canada, and it's also based on issuing tokens similar to the Singapore dollar and creating a second system that provides settlements. A feature of the system is that they have tested three different platforms and inside the settlement system they don't only have transfers of money but also payment against payment and uh, uh, delivery against payment so that's a simpler version of another system that i'm going to talk about just a bit later and uh, the data is virtual so the data is not located on servers but it's uh, stored in the cloud and this is the first time cloud technology is used for storage. Cross-border currencies and systems are a hit of the season, very popular. And uh, they might be the first, uh, even compared to retail uh, payments, because um, the time, the length of uh, cross-border payments is usually very long and that's disturbing and uh, uh, they can be based on uh, traditional systems like modification of SWIFT and implementation in all countries. The second model is when the central bank becomes kind of a super correspondent bank based on the like and they become the center for all other banks or the use of digital currencies themselves as a tool for inter-country settlements in three different ways. Uh, the first one is the country. The second one is when the currency can be used in different countries. And the third is creating a universal currency available for all countries. Now they are experimenting with these models and which of the three courses will be the first to come to the finish, we will see just a bit later, but the competition is already running. As an example, as a practical example of such solution, I would like to give a project uh, uh, Stella. It's implemented together with uh, the Bank of Japan and the European Central Bank. It inherited the ideology of target to securities and in one payment system there will be three types of assets, cash, securities and uh, tokens or collaterals. I didn't write tokens here because there are a lot of arguments whether 
securities can be tokens or not. And that's why these are three objects that uh, circulate inside one system and uh, uh, they have uh, payment to payment and delivery to payment mechanisms and uh, to maintain the independence of the central bank each central bank can have its own its own blockchain and the cross chain technology and cross chain transactions so it's possible to use two different blockchains and cross chain transactions have been tested already so what uh, challenges can it l lead to so this is the text in Russian. If you studied macroeconomics in one of the first lectures, I think you have seen a picture similar to the one on the left. So traditional economy is a very simple construction where the main economic resources are presented as contracts that exist on paper and uh, the markets and economic system uh, provide circulation of these contracts. This is how we have been living for many years. The digital economy is based uh, on tokens and digitalization uh, by smart devices, uh, physical or software, and all these uh, economic resources turn into digital images and as a result, you don't have any physical assets. You don't have problems with circulation of these assets. And uh, you can use the models of marketplace, digital currencies, platforms, machine to machine platforms, where interaction is carried out without participation of a human. And uh, the changes that come together with digitalization are presented on the right. So basically, uh, what kind of currency should service this system? Uh, central bank is the issuer, not IT provider. So central banks do not create any systems or technologies. Uh, uh, they just use what is already there in the market. Uh, the technology is based on blockchain with permanent access. It's very divisible so that it can service a lot of tiny amounts, much smaller than one cent. It's ultra fast to provide a high number of payments. Uh, also, generally, it doesn't have Uh, second tier issuer so banks uh, commercial banks will be nodes uh, that confirm transactions and maybe carry out some other functions a similar this system will remove credit risk through DVP mechanism and hopefully forest forex risk uh, due to the existence of a single currency what may be the problems? Um, you can see them in this slide. I'm, no, I'm not going to talk about them in detail. I think I'm running out of time. The problem of cash. For example, in China, there is a discussion uh, when, how soon cash so should be out of circulation. Uh, also, there is a new book called The Curse of Cash. Uh, which gives uh, arguments why this should not happen. It's a big uh, problem for the states because uh, when cash disappears, uh, they uh, lose synergy and uh, that may become a problem. The problem is who is going to be the lender of last resort uh, maintaining the banking channel, what will be the role of the banks in this new system, what interest rates will play a key role in this model. There are multiple interest rates which central banks wanted to avoid. The problem of deposit insurance, whether they will 
remain or not the problem of uh, bank runs because uh, if uh, people begin to use more digital currencies that may be a problem for banks the next one is anonymity and uh, money laundering and uh, algorithmic uh, digital cur currency which uh, can be the in, with which uh, the central bank can be replaced by a certain algorithm that will rep replace it. And the next one is for financial markets, problems for financial markets. One of them is instant taxation. That's uh, opportunity to uh, charge uh, taxes from each transaction, but not at the end of the month or year. For example, crypto is used in Florida to accept tax payments. Also, existence of marketplaces today, uh, there is an ongoing battle between marketplaces and ec ecosystems. A typical example is the battle between Sberbank and uh, fast uh, payment systems. and. Uh, we don't know who is going to win in this battle. And the next one is the appearance of the new types of financial intermediaries. They are exchanges, wallet banks, funds. There are a lot of intermediaries of different kind, but actually it's a new type of financial intermediaries. So when they say that digitalization leads to this intermediation, it's true, but only to a certain degree. So that is the end of my presentation today. I'm not sure whether I still have any time left. Sergei says it's OK. So I'm ready to answer questions if you have any. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting lecture. What do you think are the prospects for creating a similar system in reality in Russia and the EU? In EU, it's like a, tro uh, a Trojan horse. We can imagine that a similar system, the idea of creating a universal digital currency may be created, but the possibility is not very high. Because uh, I heard a phrase that the emission of currencies is as important for sovereignty as the army. So if you take all the countries and uh, uh, and look at uh, the countries that have their own uh, currency and their own army, you will very easily spot uh, the independent countries. So uh, um, universal uh, currency for the EU means uh, sovereignty for the EU, but not sovereignty for each country. And uh, the plans are to do that after 2024, and that's kind of a very long term. Uh, so when it comes to the differences between state digital money and uh, like original digital money. What do you think is the difference between them? The difference is uh, the same as between uh, a s super fast speed train and the first uh, 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 engine train that was created uh, hundreds of years ago. So basic cryptocurrencies were very good experiments. They are entertaining and fun financial assets but, 
but when it comes to regulation, they will be regulated in the same way as regular money. So they will be regulated as the normal money. Uh, and the crypto systems will be regulated uh, uh, in the way. Alexei is going to talk about that today. And we are going to have a discussion about that. But I think that uh, Basel Committee has already made all the necessary instructions, uh, limitations. Uh, so if you think that the state will allow some Libra or Gram to go into circulation, I think it's a huge exaggeration and uh, uh, like a sensible state will never allow any alternative to the state currency. So I'm, I'm absolutely sure about that. And I have a lot of respect for Bitcoin and other digital currencies, but I think these are very interesting things, but not uh, very possible inside the state in all the meanings of this word. Спасибо за вашу удивительную презентацию. И я хотел бы спросить вас, попросить вас рассказать поподробнее о о об отсутствии э, защиты личных данных при использовании денег Центробанка. Потому что мне кажется, что в последнее время защита личных данных все меньше и меньше используется э, в, сдел... э, в транзакциях Центробанка. И в результате это э, нарушает э, нормы демократии. Thank you for the question. I will start with the fact that in many countries, including Russia, one of the key problems is the problem of privacy. So the regulation in, Russia, in Europe, a recent law in California in the US, our legislation are devoted to this topic. And I think it's going to develop and uh, not directly, but the state will pay a lot of attention to privacy. On the other hand, we all understand that in spite of all mixers and uh, lightnings, generally anonymization will be eliminated in this or that way, in different ways, different mechanisms. It's not very likely that it will grow or increase. Talking about central bank currencies, now we can see a lot of examples, for example in China, very nice uh, prediction. First of all, existence of social ratings, like digital portraits of uh, individuals. Depending uh, on this, they will have certain limitations or not. Also certain limitations within each currency. In Europe there was a report that says how you can use the digital currency of the central bank to limit incorrect or improper transactions. So a lot of attention is paid to this problem and I think that just like fighting offshores didn't finish in favor of offshores, the same way the fight for privacy and anonymity doesn't have a lot of positive chance and people who like or who want to have privacy will either use cash or gold. The last question. Thank you very much for your presentation. A lot of ideas and thoughts, a lot of food for thought. I have seen a news recently that by 2035 Russia will stop using cash. How do you think how possible do you think it is? And you were talking about programmable currencies if they are used. Do you think it's possible that uh, it, that a currency will have a lifetime, that it will die after a while. 
And uh, how do you think this uh, currency will circulate in the economy? I'm not sure about Russia, but the the last idea that you mentioned is a fact. It's a model that is used not in the context of picketing, but uh, as a technology in general. And uh, it's not a subject of my talk today, but the question of uh, social equality, I think, will be solved through the basic income model. And in the basic income model, through the like ticket system, and uh, the use of digital currencies fits very well into this system. It's like, it will be like a voucher that people get. So I think this is the model that will exist. It's hard to imagine the exact construction. Uh, talking about the complete disappearance of cash, I doubt it, because uh, today the cost of uh, issuing cash is uh, 15 or 16 uh, million dollars, but the profit of the state is much, much higher. So thank you very much.